Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. It's season four of Greenleaf, episode nine, entitled God's Justice. Only two more episodes of the season. I'll do a quick recap and we'll have the review at the end. That's all coming up next. <laughs> It's Bunny. <laughs> the opening scene, we have a few people in Grace's office. We have Grace, Connie, and Judy. They are trying to sway Clara to get her to vote yes. Vote yes that we have 50-50 on the board. 50% Calvary and 50% Harmony and Hope. They want to give their two cents on why she should vote for yes. She seems like she's persuaded and the meeting comes to a close and everyone leaves the office. And Grace receives a call from Lady May and Lady May says, so I'm guessing that she voted yes and you know, what about Connie? And Grace tells her that it's pretty evident that she's gonna vote yes. And Lady, Lady May says, well, Bishop is gonna intercept Connie because he's gonna try to sway her vote from yes to no. So maybe he can talk some sense into her. And Grace says, okay, and she hangs up with Lady May and we have Phil that in enters her office. And he tells Grace, I need you to step down from the position that you are in now because I have proof that you lied to the police on AJ's behalf and you have until sundown to make that decision. Connie notices that Jacob has a red devil's jacket on and she says, oh, you're looking pretty good. You look really nice. And he says, yes, I want to go and I want to talk to Dante. Plus he has an opening for his new sports bar. So while they're preparing for that opening, I want to go down there and talk to him. And she says, well, could you still go and talk to your mom and ask her about the house? It's really important to me. And it's normal to inquire about what's in her will and what she plans on doing to the house because that will be benefit us in the future. And Jacob says that comes off as very rude and I'm asking her this question, not only once, but going into something so personal. Carissa says there's nothing personal about that. And Jacob says, I think it's rude. And since you want to know so badly, how about you ask her and I'll keep you in my prayers. So pretty much just like you ask and good luck. Don't ask me anymore. Bishop intercepts Connie as she's getting out of her vehicle to go into her house. And she says, you know what, Bishop, I don't want to hear about anything you have to say because you're not going to convince me. And Bishop says, you know, it would be a shame if people found out that you were bribed to go along with Harmony and Hope. And it really wouldn't be a good look for you if this information got out. And she tells him, if you really think that that's going to kind of scare me into changing my thoughts and how to vote, what to do with this church, you really might want to change your frame of mind. And he tells her, do you remember where the church stood at one point in time before we got into this boiling mess of confusion? And she gives this shady comment kind of referring to, well, you've had a lot of mess in the past and remember the things that you've done that came to the light. So you pretty much drag down the church yourself. And he gets close to her and says, you might want to rethink that because if this dirt gets out, then what will people think about you? So think about that before everybody finds out. And he leaves. Judy is pretty serious in talking to Corinne and asking her, I asked you last week to print out the church bylaws and you have yet to do that. And Corinne says, well, I can do it, but if I, if I leave the page that I'm on, I won't be able to get you those Amy Grant tickets. And Judy says, okay, well, after you've done that, go ahead and print out the bylaws and give me those tickets. And I won't say thank you until I receive both. And Corinne says, well, okay, I'll get those to you. 
Carissa goes to Lady May once again asking for something. And she tells Lady May, well, I really want to know this information about the house. And Lady May says, I know, and I know that you're so desperate that I had to remove documents from a safe because I have a nosy, sneaky daughter-in-law that keeps snooping around trying to get information. So we know that Lady May took out those documents from the last episode because Lady May already had a feeling that Carissa was doing some sneaky stuff and Carissa says well you know I, I had to do that because I really want to know the information about the house and who gets the house and Lady May says okay you know what fine I'll tell you what happens to this house if something were to happen in our passing she said the house is given to Jacob Grace and Charity and it's given to them equally and Carissa she really doesn't have a happy uh, exception of the news that she's hearing but she's at least satisfied that she knows something and Lady May is just so fed up with it and she gives this frustrated glance just out of the window like oh lord just get this woman away from me. Grace barges into Charity's office and says what does Phil have on me proving the information about AJ and what I've said and what I've done with the police. And Charity says, well, I have no idea where he got that information from. And, you know, Grace, she doesn't believe that. And she says, what is it? What is it that's making you so spiteful and doing certain things? What does Phil know? And, and, and where is he getting that from? And she's steady trying to pull an answer out of Charity. And she says, whatever information that he has, he has it. And it's not anybody else's fault and nobody is, else is to blame but you. This is your situation and you just got to face the fire. And Grace says, with that thought process, don't you know you could send somebody to jail and you could ruin several people's lives because you're not meeting me halfway on the information that you that you know. And Charity says, well, you know, basically whatever happens is because you you put that out there and you have to deal with it. And Grace says, wow, that's your answer, huh? Okay, and she takes a mental note of Charity's behavior. Judy goes to Phil's office to chit chat and to catch up with him. And Phil wants to know, why are you in my office? What do you want? And she tells him, oh, nothing much. I'm waiting on Corinne to print out those bylaws of the Calvary Church and Miami Grant tickets. But while I'm here, why are you acting such a way with Charity? Do you really love her? Do you really care for her? Or let me take a good guess. It's because she's black. It's because she's black. And Phil confirms that it's not about that, but he really does like her. And it's not some act. And he's really serious about them knowing one another and learning one another. And she says, hmm, okay, well, I beg to differ. What makes us so different and phil says okay if you're gonna go there and you're gonna keep asking me about it you two actually have a lot in common she says well what do me and charity have in common he says well you both are loud and annoying when you don't get what you want you're both daughters of fathers who in reflection feel like nobody listens to them or nobody cares so you guys have a lot in common common and Judy says okay well that's cute and everything but you need to take me out to dinner and I would like not only a dinner but a steak dinner and make sure you bring Miss Charity with you because despite it all we still need to feed her um, information and pull information from her as well we need to make sure that she's on our side and find out any information about what Bishop is doing or Grace Grace's stands and opinions on certain things. So, yes, invite her to dinner. Do that. And she walks out. Jacob meets up with Dante to see his new sports bar. And as they're setting everything up, he's looking around like, wow, this, this really looks nice. It really looks good. And Dante says, yeah, well, you know, Nikki, you know, she helped out here and there, but it's over between us. And Jacob says, well, you know, unfortunately, you know, I hope it works out. And Dante says, well, you know, it's somebody else new that I'm talking to. And Jacob says, well, you know, hey, man, we'll spill the beans. Who is it? And he says, I'll tell you as soon as it gets some traction and if it starts to get serious. But for now, I am talking to somebody else. And he says, well, that was quick. Well, you know, congratulations. Okay. And Dante tells Jacob, 
I really wanted to talk to you to discuss what you tried to tell me last time and I apologize because my mind was in 50 different places and I really didn't want to hear that because it seemed like everybody had a handout. But I really think it's a good idea that I donate something to your wife's school. And Jacob says, well, hey man, you don't have to do that. I That was wrong of me. I was trying to help out in some way. And he says, no, Dante says, no, 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 this is a really good idea. And then on top of that, I need you to ask your wife to be with me when I make a press conference, because not only will this give me good PR that I'm trying to move into the right direction, but I need to get off the bench. And if I do something like this, it will really help me out. So here's the check. And I want you to give this to your wife. And that ought to gain you a lot of cool points because there's been some static in the past. So you make sure that you give that to your wife. And Jacob is really grateful and happy that he's decided to move forward with his idea. Phil tells Charity, hey, we're going to have dinner with Judy. And the reason why we're having you know, dinner with Judy is because we need to go over some details about the church and we need to hear her out. So let's just go. And Charity says, well, us together with Judy? And he says, I know it sounds strange, but we really need to get her in our circle. We really need to make sure that we have the position for you as co-lead pastor. We need to make sure that we have that in the bank. And Charity says, well, should we let her know about grace? Does she know about grace? And Phil says, no, don't let the cat out of the bag. It about anything about grace she doesn't know anything about that charity says well okay i'll go if you make sure that whatever we're having for dinner that there's sushi so he says okay he then sees sophia and grace they're in her room and she makes a call to aj there's no answer but she leaves a voicemail saying aj i know you don't want to talk to me i'm probably the last person that you want to talk to but there's got to be some common ground that we can come to. My mother lied for you, and she's in hot water. She could go to jail. And then that's not fair to me because I'm losing my mother. And I know I'm from the suburbs, and I don't know your struggle and all of that, but this is my mother, and it's, it's our mother. And if you don't come forward or if you don't talk to me, it's just going to ruin a bunch of lives if she goes to jail. And I just would really appreciate it if you communicated with me in some way. And she's on the verge of tears. Sophia hangs up the phone and she tells her mother, you know, I thought about going back to school, but I'm not going back. And Grace says, well, why would you give up school? What are you doing? And Sophia says, if I go back to school and something happens or something goes down here and I'm not here, it's going to crush me. So I've got to stay. Bishop fills in Lady May about the talk that he had with Connie. And he says, you know what? I have faith and I have a feeling that everything's going to work out. And Lady May says, please don't tell me that you mentioned anything about the bribe. And he says, well, I had to. I had to say something that would convince her to vote, you know, out of this mess. And Lady May says, you know what? You are so wise on so many things, but I forbid you. I told you not to mention the information that we know and that we know that she was bribed. Now she has more information of how to tweak it and how to go around it or whatever the case may be. I can't believe that you did that. And Bishop says, I was desperate and I was trying to do any and everything to make sure that we swayed her thoughts and we swayed her her vote and Lady Mary says you know what I thought I was going to bed but I'm about to go in my closet and pray I, I'm just so done with this now we got Carissa speaking with Grace in her room inquiring again about the house and she's telling Grace you know I know that Charity were paying her alimony to her ex-husband so we know that wow we got the alimony payments rolling in and, and that's adding up probably because <laughs> alimony uh and especially not being in the situation you want to be in financially ooh, that could be really sucking charity dry at this point we don't know that just yet and she says you know i really wanted to come to you and i just want to get out of here when i first met jacob i thought i was going to be in this house forever but you your mom and me we don't get along and i just really don't like living here and grace says man it's that bad huh but what i could do is sell buy your share out and then you could buy a bag and then you could get the cash from that and chris is just like you know no there's got to be another way and we know that our share alone of the house is 
what, a million dollars? And Grace gives a laugh, like, like, I know you don't think I'm about to give you a million dollars. And she says, hmm, I don't know about that. And Krista says, you know what? Well, how about 500,000? And honestly, anything over 250 is manna falling from the sky. And Grace says, well, you know, I could do that. And Carissa says, so you have the money. She says, well, yeah, I got, I got some money. I got something, you know. And she, Carissa says, well, from where? And Grace says, well, that's a long story. Carissa, once again, being super, super duper nosy and trying to figure out people's business is just so annoying. But Grace gives her that side eye and wondering why she's rushing everything so quickly and why. And she says that to Carissa. Why are you doing this in such a rush? It seems so rushed and it seems like there's more you're not telling me. And Carissa just says, well, I just want to know because I don't want to live here anymore. It is time for me to move on Connie she immediately tells Phil she goes to his office to tell him hey Bishop knows about the bribe from Harmony and Hope so the only thing that I can come up with how he got the information is Corinne and to amend this whole vote among the board that we've got to make sure that it's not 50 50 now it has to be 60 40 there has to be more weight on the opposite end just so we can make sure that it's an even playing field we have to do that and judy is just like so blackmail and connie goes well i mean that's what they're doing and we've got to play smart about this and phil gives that nod of you know we'll we'll weigh our options and as connie leaves the room judy says to phil i am so just appalled and shocked that they're using blackmail like the nerve of these people when in actuality phil and the whitmores and everybody else does it they do that to take other people's churches so it was just very hypocritical for her to say such a thing so she storms out of there and, and rushes into grace's office and says what in the world is going on you know what is bishop doing and and why is he using that against Connie and you know Grace is just like I have no idea what you're talking about what are you talking about and Judy can genuinely see that Grace is really clueless about what she's talking about she says nothing no thanks and walks out of the room as if to say wow this is something Grace doesn't know so we still got some luck on our side because if Grace doesn't know about this bribe that's something she can hold in her pocket as more evidence and more of something against Harmony and Hope. Judy is so happy to fire Corinne after she learns that that's the only way <laughs> that Bishop would have known that information. So after that, we see Jacob gets home and he gets to the room area and Carissa has decorated it with candles and it's low lighting. And she says, I have very good news. And he says, well, I've got good news too, baby. And they share their intimate moment. And I thought, woo, girl, you are sharing that Fernando juice with your husband. We got Nikki, Zora, and Sophia. They're all at the bachelorette pad. You might as well call it that. And they're all sitting there. And Nikki is looking on the internet and says, I can't believe Dante is opening up this sports bar. It was my idea. It was my designs. And he just had it open. And he had the nerve not even to invite me. And Zora says, well, you know, we didn't get an invite, but we should go. And she says, okay, we should go. And um, so they noticed that Sophia is gathering up her things and getting ready to go. And she has this cute little top bun with the bangs. I said, okay, put the south side bun with the Chinese bangs. Where you going? <laughs> but it was really, really cute. And she says, no, I'm not hungry. And Zora says, well, okay, you know, you're not hungry now, but we just ordered, you know, some food to come here, but whatever. So after Sophia leaves out the door, Zora says to Nikki, let's just go to this opening and let's see what it's all about. So they said, okay, well, what you wearing? They ready to dip out. We got Charity, Phil, and Judy at a sushi steak place. And Judy says, oh, sushi and steak. Yeah, that's a good combination. And she's talking to Phil and looking at him like that was wise. Whatever you needed to do to get Charity here, I don't even care. And Judy makes that statement in saying that Phil really knows how to treat a lady. And he's such a ladies man. And believe me, I know. Charity says, well, what does that mean? And Judy says, well, he didn't tell you. She's like, tell me what? 
And Phil gives her that eye like, don't start anything. But she's very mischievous and she wants to put a dagger in Charity's back. She says, oh, well, oh, it was nothing. I thought you knew. And Charity says, I'm about to grab one of those knives over there and get to chopping if you don't tell me what you mean. Judy says, well, I thought you knew it's not this serious. You know, in other words, just pretend like I didn't even say anything. Grace is informing Bishop and her mom that somehow, some way, Phil knows information that she lied to the police on AJ's behalf. And Lady May says, well, how does he have that information and how can we believe that he has it? And Grace says, well, some way, somehow, he has that information. He knows that I lied some way, somehow. And the only, only thing I can think of is he got that information from Charity because she was here when all of that went down and AJ was here. So it's got to be her. And Lady May is just like, ooh, that child. Like, I just can't believe it. <laughs> I just can't believe it. And Lady May tells Grace, the only way to end this situation on an upswing. It's just to go when you go up there and preach, just to go up there and tell the truth. Put all your cards on the table, keep it honest, because if you can take control of what you've done wrong, nobody else can take that power against you. And your father didn't listen to me when I told him about what not to say to Connie. And Grace says, well, say what? She was just like, look, he didn't listen to me, but you need to listen to me, all right? You both need to listen to what I'm saying. Do not step down as pastor. Speak your truth, say it, and once it's out, it's out. You take control of the situation. And Lady May starts to leave the room with her wine glass. And Bishop says, do what you need to do to protect your son. And Lady May walks back into the room and she leans down to Grace's ear and says, do what's best for your soul. <laughs> she walk, does that little walk off like I said what I said. Okay. And he walks out and Bishop just looks defeated and he just kisses Grace on the side of the head to give this telepathy meaning of do what you feel is right. Zora and Nikki arrive to Dante's sport, sports bar and it's popping. They got the screens and the music and everybody's there. And as Dante is enjoying the evening, we see Miss Sophia. She's leaning on Dante like that's her boo and hugging him in front of everybody. And Nikki sees this and says, oh no, like, Sophia, what are you doing? She says, well, I'm, I'm hanging out. And Zora says, oh, so you weren't hungry, huh? But you're here. And Nikki says, well, this is not cool. Like, I should bust you up for that. I thought I was hearing the Nuck If You Buck song starting to come on. I'm like, oh, they about to start fighting? Okay. But security quickly calms down this situation and escorts Nikki and Zora out of the sports bar. bar. And uh, Sophia, she's just sitting there looking, you know, kind of like, dang, what did I do? But then she has this body language of, well, they got upset Oh, well, and she continues to rock on and, and chill with her new boo, I guess. Charity, she talks to Phil in the car after dinner, and she says, well, how come you didn't tell me about you and Judy? And Phil says, you know what? She's so far in my past, I really didn't think it was that important, and I really wasn't going to bring her up again, so why must I bring this up? And Charity says, it's really important because she's there, and why didn't you say anything? And he says, you know what? here and he hands her a key and charity says well what is this and he says it's the key to my apartment you can go in there you can snoop around you can find whatever and all you're gonna find are pictures of you everywhere and a list on my refrigerator listing all the good things that I want to do for you. And he gives her a kiss and Charity just goes right into it. Not thinking, girl, this man got a lot of money. That's probably just one of his apartments. <laughs> so he could easily set that one up to paint this picture. Dirty. But Charity is penis hypnotized and she can't think straight. Zora, she confronts Sophia uh, the next morning at breakfast and says, well, what was that all about? You hanging with Dante now? Like, first you said you wasn't hungry, then you went out and you hanging with Dante. And you know Nikki is there and how that might affect her. Like, what's going on with you? And Miss Sophia, it's like, oh, don't do it, Miss Sophia. Don't do it. <laughs> but she says, you know, I'm an adult and I'm grown and I can do what I want to do and I don't have to tell you or anybody else what I'm doing. And she said, honey, I'm a grown woman. I can do what 
whatever. I don't want. I thought I was going to see Beyonce come out. Doom, 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 doom. Sophia said, I don't care what nobody say. Okay. And Zora says, you know what? This is why you don't have any friends. And if you do have friends, you do stuff like this and you sway them from really liking you. So why would you do a thing like that? Keep acting like that. You know what? I'm so glad that you're going back to school. And Sophia says, well, you know what? I've decided that I'm going to stay here. I'm actually not going back to school. And she gets up and does that little turn like, I'm staying here, boo. What? I'm, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> Let me go on. And Zora has that look like, ooh, I wish you'd get out of my face. And she contains herself and she keeps her composure in front of her family. But Miss Zora, Miss Zora, let's remember when you was acting ignorant. Okay, and running amok. So calm down. Sophia is rebelling. She's rebelling. She's going through her rebellious phase. Dun, dun, dun. Carissa finally answers all of the calls from Fernando. And she says, why are you calling me? What do you want? He says, well, I have some information based upon what you gave me about the house. And Carissa says, you know, what? we weren't able to get the house, okay? He says, no, 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 not the other house you were interested in. The house that you're in right now. I have some information that may grant you full ownership of the house completely. And Carissa has that look like, hmm, tell me more. Judy tells Phil in all this confidence that after I got the bylaws finally from, you know, Corinne, um, that I read that Calvary has this rule that the eldest Greenleaf that works for Calvary, they have the control and the power to cast the tie-breaking vote when it comes to the board. So that means that we will be able to still have Connie and that eldest employee can help us win the tie. So we actually outnumber what's who's who. And when we vote, that'll give us the toss-up. And Phil says, well, what vote? And Judy says, well, that's for me to know and you to find out. We're at Sunday worship. Charity is on stage singing and everybody in church is feeling the spirit and enjoying the song. And after Charity's song, Grace gets up and says, well, good morning, church. Good morning. And she goes in to give a Bible verse and to start her sermon. And before she can talk, she sees AJ come through the back doors. And when she sees him come through the back doors, she pauses and says, oh, well, where was I, church? And they're all reciting the scripture, like, oh, this is where you were. And she says, yes, well, and Lady May is in the office, is, is in the audience, and she's saying, don't do it, don't do it. She's looking up there like she better not. And Grace says, I'm sorry to tell you, church, but as of now, I am stepping down as lead pastor. And the church is just like, what, what's going on? And Lady May is in the audience like, oh, no. Judy whispers to Phil, what the heck is she doing? What is she doing? And Phil says, I'll explain what just happened later, but, you know, chill. And that is the end of the episode. My only thing is who will be the person to give the green leaves what they need. Um... Because they've already made it known that they know about the bribe with Connie. They've already made it known that they're aware of this 50-50 board split and who needs to say yes and who needs to say no. So there has to be something additionally that's going to happen <laughs> in the next episode because they can't leave us hanging for the next season based upon that plot twist. That would be kind of weak. So there has to be this cliffhanger that's emerging. And everybody, say it with me, the most important question is, where is, say it with me, Noah? <laughs> have the writers written him out i think we can say goodbye to him cue the boys to men it's so hard to say goodbye track i think he's gone i think his wife said you thought you were gonna go see uh grace or whatever you was going i think you're gonna stay home because every time you leave it's a problem so maybe she maybe she got his foot her foot on his neck i don't know um 
I'm wondering how Carissa's going to react to the check. Um, that's from Dante. But what Carissa is failing to remember is you're still indebted to Mr. Fernando. Um, he's giving you that quote unquote free money that ain't free. So you're still indebted to the dingling that you took. So get ready for that. When will Charity feel that backfire of being so de deceptive against her own family? When it does backfire, who will she turn to to share that empty space? Will she be kicked on the street? I don't know. Girl, Charity and Carissa, are they drinking from the same fountain? I think so. And I don't know why. <laughs> but it's really confusing. Her son that we see less and less of. She puts them to sleep and she gives them a few kisses here and there, but Charity, you're not tending to your son so much so that we see flashes of him being taken care of by other people. Get your life together. I feel like I need to play an old Everest commercial. What are you doing? You're sitting down, you're thinking about being deceptive, taking your family down. Do something else, get a hobby. Go to Everest to feel like, girl, you need to do something. Like, yeah, you got a big house and a family that's supportive. Pick up something, you know? What are you doing with your life? You know, I did it, you could do it too. <laughs> girl, look, I need to play that commercial. Um, Let me know what you think. I'm excited to see how this season is going to end because it's really um, been thrown like a whirling derbies. It's all over the place. Uh, the plot twists, the turns, it's very evident and confirmed that the writing, the new writing has turned it and morphed it into a soap opera-esque series. So we've seen how they've kept it going and you know, it's sifting us to just say, okay, because it's entertaining. Do I like it? No. But I'm already invested in this show, so I feel like I got to keep watching just to see how it will end. When is it coming to a close? Will next season be the last one? If it is, it would make a lot of sense. But seeing how they're making a lot of money on it, they may stretch it and stretch it and stretch it like some old pantyhose that your grandmama used to wear because those would stretch long and she would wash them and hang them up and they would be 11 feet tall so them stockings would stretch so i really think that they're going to stretch out these uh episodes and this series unfortunately it would be perfect it would be superb writing if they brought everything to some sort of conclusion giving us an idea of one of the plot lines coming to a close. Please, can we just have something, some closure or idea of what's happening at least in one person's life? Because it's just going on and on and on. Like, okay, well, I'll see y'all next week. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Subscribe. Hit that notification bell when you subscribe so you don't miss any posts. I get messages saying, Bunny, I didn't see when you made this last review with this last post. How come I don't know? You have to click on the notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, officialbun underscore E, and also check out my podcast show entitled The Bunny Show, the premiere episode called You're So Not Okay. This episode is making you awake to getting your life back on the right track, how you can refocus, making sure that your life is open to ideas and, and you can move on with your life and understanding how social media is involved and how that can you know, cause some type of turmoil, turmoil in your mental health. I'll put the link below. Make sure you check that out. It is certified Google. It is part of the Google podcast family and it's gotten some really, really good reviews. And I appreciate people who have checked out that show. I'll see you guys next week.